get things started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Whatnots Review Show. This is episode 56. Uh, that is a lot. We've been... It's big. Yeah, we've been d d doing a lot of these. Um, my name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined on the other side of the computer screen, as always, by Melissa Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. Melissa, how are you? I'm good, Kyle. How have you been this week? Yeah, I've been good good yesterday i read a bunch of comics it was oh, free fun. comic book day yesterday yes uh so i went and i spent like 75 dollars on comics and stuff like that and it's fantastic uh and then i just spent the day reading all sorts of different comics a bunch of thor comics and then i finally read civil war 2 which mm. is one of marvel's event books and it was really bad uh, so <laughs> there you go well that's but, the nice uh, thing about comics is that there's so many of them if you read one you don't like you've immediately you have like so on. many other in your pile yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i totally forgot it was free comic book day until about 3 p.m <laughs> did you rush down to the store or did no, you get I was... your brothers to pick you up some stuff no, no, I forgot until 3 p.m. when I was driving past a comic book store and I looked uh, over okay. at it and I'm like, well, there's not a big crowd there anymore. So I imagine they're done with all of the fun activities. <laughs> like I've been to the store for past free comic book days and they've had like uh, just like cosplayers and games and we have a local pancake artist. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> It was That's custom fantastic. make you whatever pancake you want, and it looks great, and then you, you eat it, and it tastes good also. My shop d doesn't really do anything like that. They're a fantastic shop, but they're really small. And mm. so, like, you go in there, and it's all, like, three people in in the store is a packed store. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's an it's an all-day thing for them where it's, it, it just seems like it's packed the entire time. But they don't do extra, like, hey, we're playing D&D &D over there. There's a pancake guy. There's cosplayers. I don't know why he's here, but he's here, too. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's none, none, none of that stuff. It's just big sales all day. <laughs> That's good. So, yeah. Uh, you know what else I did yesterday? What? I finally made sounds for our spoiler alert thing. Oh, exciting! Yeah, so we 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 will have that when uh when it when it when it's, it's t t time to do spoilers. But this week we are going to be talking about Castle Rock. Mm -hmm. This is a ten episode Hulu original series based off the works of Stephen King. Uh, it's a set setting he uses often. Uh, there's a bunch of characters in here that are from his books or related to characters mm -hmm. in his books, or they make re references to characters in his books, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a k k kind of like a, I mean, if if you're familiar with Stephen King, it's it's horror, suspense, but it's not like jump scare. Or yeah. It's more of that slow, creeping, e e evil uh, you don't really necessarily know what's going on, and certain things are often left open-ended. Uh, but yeah, that is what we watched this week. Uh, Melissa, what did you think? First off, you pitched this show to me incorrectly. I want to let you know. Oh, yes. I, 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 I recognized that once I was like, I'm three episodes in and it's all one big story. <laughs> yeah, you told me, oh, it's like a horror anthology series. That's and what when I, I looked, thought it was. And I looked it up on Hulu and I saw that there were a bunch of episodes already watched. I'm like, oh, that must be like when my brother, before he made his own profile, he was watching these on my account. So I asked him, hey, we're going to watch that show you know, this week. What did you think about it? And he's like, oh, I started watching it, but it kind of jump the shark for me at like episode seven and i'm like how did it do that it's an anthology show yeah. if you don't like one episode the next one is different and he's like oh no it's all one story so i i so yeah originally i thought it was all one sto story and then looking it up to pitch i don't know why but somehow i got the impression that it was an anthology or maybe i was looking at something else and i just <laughs> who knows but yeah I, I i pitched it last week as an anthology but it is not it is not an anthology it's one brand new story all based mm -hmm. on the works of stephen king it takes a lot of ingredients from his stories and kind of mixes them together mm -hmm. which i think is a neat formula it's 
Uh, if you know that ABC show Once Upon a Time, yes. which is like all the fairy tales are real. We live in fairy tale town, kind of. And here's this character, and all you know, these two. It's like Captain Hook and some princess or a couple or something like that. It's like that, but Stephen King stories, which yeah. is kind of fun. Yeah, that's neat. Um, so yeah, G- general thoughts. What did you think? Ah. Uh, I was did, expecting Did you agree it's... with your brother? I don't know exactly what he's talking about. Like, there's a lot of twists and turns, but nothing was, like, major. Like, nothing was seriously off the rails, jump the shark territory for me. But I was hoping it would be scarier. And I have to say, I was, like, a little underwhelmed on the whole, but there's a lot of individual little things that really impressed me. Yeah, I, I I think I'm of a similar mind. I think mm-hmm. I agree with your brother. It was around episode mm-hmm. seven and eight that it was just like, all right, well, this took a turn. It gets uh, weird, but I don't know if it got so that weird for me. I, I, I think overall, I enjoyed it enough. Like, mm-hmm. I, I would say this is a good, solid show. Um, But yeah, I, I wanted it to be a little bit more scary. I yeah. wanted there to be a little bit more of a consistent mystery. It seemed like there were like three or four mysteries that they yeah. were trying to weave in there. And it was just like, hey, the whole town is weird and messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I wanted a little bit more focus. But uh, yeah, I think it does a really good job of like, of, of just getting you interested in all of the aspects yeah if, if that makes sense the disp- like i i guess in instead of focusing on one thing because it did do all mm-hmm. of these like it, it, that makes it sound like there's so much going on but there's certain like smaller things mm-hmm. like huh that's strange i kind of want to know more about that tell me more and you mm-hmm. might get an episode that focuses more on that character or that mm-hmm. setting or you know something but it uh, it may or may not really deal with the overall story, and it's just... Yeah, there are some things that are introduced early that aren't really closed up by the end of the series. This show also ends... I think there's a season two. Coming. Okay, it yes. ends ambiguously enough that it's like you could pick this up again or you could not. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I liked it fine enough. I think I would watch season two just to see what you know if 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 they wrap things up further or if they explore something new Mm -hmm. um because there's there's a lot of mysteries still yeah lingering let's do a synopsis yes so castle rock maine surprise stephen king is all about maine i don't know if he's ever told a story anywhere but main thing (laughs) <laughs> no, that's not true. I I think The Shining is set in Colorado, but he's a very Maine-based man. But there are references to The Shining yes. in this. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Castle Rock, Maine is this little town with a dark history, and it seems like everything just goes wrong there. It's just a sour place. It's just mm-hmm. steeped in, like, tragedies and horrors, and it's like, oh, well, you remember when, you know, that guy got hit by a truck and that thing caught on fire and that person died. Like, there's really bad horror stories from the past around every corner. And there was a couple who adopted this son named Henry. And when Henry was 11, he went missing for like a, two weeks in the dead of winter. And he's saved, like he's found and he's rescued. And he has no memory of what happened. And his dad died uh out there searching for him like you know he fell off a rock it was the dead Mm -hmm. of winter he was in really bad shape and his dad ended up dying and everybody blamed that death on henry for making his dad chase out you know chase after him out in the woods and oh you probably just ran away for the attention you know you have a story to come back to us with it, it was one of those things of like, hey, something happened out there. You're the only one that knows. Yeah. You were the only one that was with it him. It must be you. must have been you, yeah. So this kid grew up with that terrible thing hanging over his head. Everybody in the town hates him. And he moved away. He's like a lawyer in another state. And a mysterious prisoner is found at Shawshank Prison. The previous warden commits suicide and... Poor Locke. 
Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's Gary John Quinn Locke from Lost. From Lost. Who, yes, who <laughs> I have great sympathy for because he's John Locke. Yeah. He commits suicide and like there's new staff coming over and taking over the prison. And while they're doing this, they find like way down in like the depths of the prison, there's a man in a cell who is not accounted for. Like he was a private prisoner of the warden. Down in this abandoned section under like some like bunker. Like this guy is forgotten. Yes. And he's silent pretty much. In very, very shell shocked, and all he has to say is Henry Deaver. So somebody calls Henry Deaver, like, there's a weird guy who knows your name. Who is the I young g- kid that went missing when he was 11 and stuff like that? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so Henry has to come back to Castle Rock, Maine, and figure out, like, who is this guy? Why did he want me? I guess I'm his lawyer now. What's yeah. happening? So it's uh, about getting that guy out of prison, finding out what he was doing, mom, like Henry and his family, you know, his mom, his mom's boyfriend, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a neighbor girl from when he was growing up. There's a lot going on, but that's the basic start of the thing. Yeah, that's that's how everything starts. And they get wrapped up into who this prisoner yeah. was. What are these mysteries that are happening here? What really happened to Henry Deaver? What really mm-hmm. happened to his father? Stuff like that. Um, so good mysteries. I think yeah. it, it, it ends up being very suspenseful and like, you, I, I, like, I felt like I wanted to know what was happening in this town. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I feel like they do a really good job of that. Um, but yeah, I say housekeeping and then spoilers. Yeah, we got to like dive that. into this thing. Exactly. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping for you guys. Last week on the review show, we covered an audio drama mm-hmm. called The Earth Collective. Uh, highly recommend it. Go check it out. That one grew on me a lot. Uh, season three should be coming out in the near future. I don't know exactly yeah. when, uh, but we listened to the first two seasons of that. It's kind of like a sci-fi suspenseful horror mystery mm-hmm. thing going yeah. on. Um, it's neat. It's neat. You guys should absolutely check it out. Uh, let's see. We also did a recent episode of the captain's log, which I still need to get up uh, and <laughs> uploaded to everything uh that'll be out on monday uh to mm-hmm. the public feeds and stuff like that um but yeah go check all that stuff out the whatnots.com uh search for us on your favorite podcatcher just search for the whatnots and we'll be there uh, and we could absolutely use your help on youtube and on twitch go follow us on both of those platforms that would be fantastic melissa i think you froze on me are you still there? I am not hearing anything. Oh, you're back. You're you robot. froze on me. I... Oh man. Okay. Uh, you. Um, go ahead. Uh, I could hear you. Your image totally froze for a minute or two. Okay. Uh, well, I I will continue on, and we will get into spoilers because that is the next big thing that we want to talk mm-hmm. about we want to dive into this show and like i said yeah. i finally have sound effects and stuff yes. for all of our spoilers things so if you have not watched castle rock we are about to get into spoilers yeah there's our mm. thing um, i'll have to go back and listen to those later because i can't hear them because yeah, we're, we're not in the same location so it's not like we can see it all right there there is a w- way that i can make uh basically what we stream out to everyone what you see on skype Ooh. but then it's weird because they're we're, we're like right now we're on the like half and half so it can see b- 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 both of us yeah so you would see yourself on one side of the screen <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, I, I have not looked into all of that. I tried to see if there's a way if I can, like, get audio on my Mac to mm-hmm. go in, into Skype, and it, it it didn't seem like there was much that I could do. But we are now in spoilers. <laughs> um, So, yeah, I let's, let's start off the bat by your brother's comment. That yes. He thought it jumped the shark. I, because I, that was... That I I guess the phrase might be a little much, 
if that makes sense. But I I know exactly what he's g- getting at. Yeah, um, I think the show it's on a different set of train tracks, but I don't know if it entirely goes off of any rails. Like it worked for me, but I can see how that might turn off somebody else. To me, it's the idea that's like, so I I have to confess, I haven't mm-hmm. read a Stephen King book, period. Most of these Easter eggs and references okay, so this is went what I over know. my head. Yeah, yeah, like there's stuff I'm familiar with through cultural osmosis. Like I've never sure. seen the Shawshank Redemption, but I know what it is. I have seen The Shining a couple times, Stand By Me, mm-hmm. there's references to Stand By Me. Yeah, I read Salem's Lot once and uh, one of his short story collections, including the Langoliers. That's something from him I really like, but they couldn't fit in a Langolier into this thing, unfortunately. There you go. And yeah, and so I've I've seen a lot of like movies, like movie ad- adaptions and stuff like that. I've seen Stand By Me. I've seen Shawshank Redemption. I've seen mm-hmm. The Shining, stuff like that. I think I've yeah. seen Cujo a long time ago, too. Yeah, and but, like uh, I'm familiar with Cujo and Christine and... Yeah, Carrie and the, the big ones. Yeah, but so I it, like when I think of Stephen King, I know he like certain stories deals more with like small town horror. Certain mm-hmm. ones are maybe a little more aliens and disease. Some are maybe a little more open ended. Some are more like action fantasy. But I like still when I when I think of Stephen King, I think of the more slow creeping horror mm-hmm. is what I think of. So. It, uh, for me, it was the last two e- episodes, episode, uh, or no, the last three, eight, nine, and ten is yeah. when it, it switched from being that, that, that suspenseful horror to a sci-fi show where they're, it's yeah. alternate dimensions and they're traveling between them and stuff like that. And I was just like, this is a completely different show. Yeah, the alternate dimension thing, that's a thing I typically like. And I think this is a particularly interesting portrayal of that, that people are, yeah. you know, like, it's not like a big branch of all these multiverses. It's like one person and another person got flipped from universe to universe and the universes around them are breaking because they're not supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. I think what they did with it was nice. And I think it makes, it's cohesive with the rest of the show as a whole. But yeah, I also thought i don't know much about stephen king but this does not seem like something he would do i, I mean it's a little too I see cosmic him, i can see him doing that but it was the idea that it switched from mm-hmm. this horror story t- to that sci-fi story like if the whole yeah. thing was a more time mm-hmm. travely universe hopping sci-fi st- 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 story in the vein of stephen king i mm-hmm. think that would be fantastic yeah um and yeah like i, I don't think there was anything particularly bad about the like portrayal of this sci-fi stuff Mm -hmm. it was just that for the majority of this show it was one thing thing. and then it switched and i was like huh that's strange like i would kind of prefer one or the other because they were both good but it was Mm -hmm. just like i kind of just want it to be this ambiguous is this guy the devil is he not what's happening here we don't really know it's just Mm -hmm. It's k- k- kind of left up for us. And then they explain it away. Oh, it's alternate dimensions and they've switched and this and that. And it's just like, oh, OK. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. It's like I think the act of having a person from another place show up in Castle Rock, like it makes sense. But it is a sci fi genre convention put into a horror rest of the story. I see how that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like I, I think it would have played better. If that's what we're led to believe, like, oh, maybe this this kid, this nameless kid, uh, which is which was really confusing for me because I watched this with subtitles and the me too, yes, uh, yeah, and they they kept referring to the kid, which is the guy that was in the cell down in in the basement of the prison, and he's not really a kid. And there's no. often scenes with him and an actual kid, like with actual <laughs> kids there. And so it's like yeah. the kid says this. And it's like, but that's not the kid. <laughs> yeah, he's like our age. Yeah, they, they needed to come up with a better way to reference him in that. Yeah. But, but I, I, I think it would have played out better if maybe we're led to suspect 
that he's from an alternate universe, mm-hmm. but they never say. I Maybe think, that's just me. I think what the alternate universe episode does is it swings this from mystery into tragedy. Because he mm-hmm. tells Molly, you know, he tells Henry the story of, no, I was living my own life. And I fell through this wormhole, kind of. I walked through this wormhole in the woods, and now I'm here. And they think I'm the devil because I showed up out of nowhere. And also, like, cosmically, I have stopped aging since that time. Yeah, which was strange. But Henry Deaver didn't? Because he got back. That's true. Yeah. So... uh, he tells that to the other characters and they don't know whether to believe him or not. The series showed us this other universe that he came from in like great detail. We're there for like 45 minutes. So the show is telling us more or less the characters don't know what to believe, but we showed you that's where he's from. And so the way the season ends where he's back in that cell in like the depths of Shawshank prison Mm -hmm. and lawyer henry deaver is down there as his warden now and he's and uh, prisoner henry deaver we're gonna figure this out so prisoner henry is like you still don't know what to do with me how long are you gonna keep doing this this isn't good for you i've gotten used to this i guess i still want to get back home this is going to kill you i seem fine but your town is fucked now yeah yeah (laughs) And so the show ends with this ambiguity, like lawyer Henry is most, he's like 95% sure, but there's that nagging doubt at him. But we know we're a hundred percent sure. No, he needs to get back to his other universe and he's stuck here. Mm -hmm. Like that takes it from like horror, mystery, ambiguity to like a real tragic turn. Yeah. Like, no, he has a life he has to get back to. We know. Which is, I, so I I both liked and didn't like that. Tr- like it's it's an interesting development for that character because up until yeah. then you really think that this kid that was locked away that we learn is actually a different v- version of Henry Daver. Um, is like you think he's some kind of serial killer. You think he's some kind of devil or demon yeah. or something or some guy with mystical magical powers or mm-hmm. something. And, and yeah, yeah, and he, he just, he's creepy as hell. He's awkward socially. Yeah. And sure, he's been trapped in, in this cell in the dark for 30 years. That, that would mess you up. Yeah. That would fuck you up. But he's, he's almost in no rush to. Uh, yeah, uh, that's another thing about this show is that i wish there was a little bit more urgency to it like, like i understand never the seems slow to, burn he never seems to ask for help is is the thing if 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 he is in another dimension and he yeah. knows it and he knows things are going wrong because of it and he's not actually trying to hurt people like yeah. why why wouldn't he just ask for help yeah it's so it starts out you're thinking okay he's this creepy weirdo And, well, once you learn what Alan had to say about that encounter with Warden Lacey, where he's Mm -hmm. got, you know, um, prisoner Henry in the back of his trunk, and he says, Warden Lacey told me that boy was the devil. And I looked at him, and I couldn't believe the fact that I believed it, but I did. So I told him, keep going, do what you're going to do. Yeah. So, And which comes pretty early into the series. So you're thinking, okay. Maybe that's real. This seems like it could be real. Maybe that is the devil boy. He seems devilish. So you're in the mindset of, okay, he was weird and creepy to begin with, and that's why he was imprisoned for 27 years. But it's, Mm -hmm. no, he was normal to begin with, and then he was imprisoned for 27 years, and that's why he got weird and creepy. And the fact that he is a cosmic aberration that's not supposed to be there. Like, there's dark stuff happening in both versions of Castle Rock, for sure, that goes back centuries as we find out to like the very first european settlers that ever came there it's not because of either henry especially not prisoner henry bad stuff is happening it and might be a catalyst but yeah th- things have always been making bad. it worse because he's a cosmic aberration 
Like he is breaking reality and that's why things are getting terrible. Mm -hmm. Things are breaking immediately around him because he's not supposed to be there. Reality is like crumbling. I kind of would have been interested in seeing that explored as as religious subtext like what if that actually is the the de- like if what if that's actually how the devil works it's he yeah. is this thing that should not be that should not exist that should not you know and and like how that p- p- plays into religion mm-hmm. in and of itself and he's not just oh he's not just some angel that fell he like he was in this other dimension that got put in over here like they didn't really explore that aspect Mm -hmm. of it and i think that would have maybe fit more or or this idea because they there's a couple episodes in there that i felt like they led me to believe that they were being possessed like or being influenced yeah because just this idea that the prisoner Henry knew a bunch of the things of the past and how they played out and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's like, hey, you know the stuff that the father said, but you weren't, you never really met the father except for in the tr- tr- trunk or you know or mm-hmm. whoever. Uh, but like, like the, the, there's things that like you wouldn't know that unless you were them. Mm-hmm. And so like that would have been an interesting thing yeah. to explore of like maybe there is this unseen force that is then possessing people Mm -hmm. and there was like an episode or two where they kind of led me to believe that and then they just kind of moved on which i mean i I, I guess is fine because that's not what they were doing but then i question why even bring those hints up Mm -hmm. like who knows yeah, it does seem like Prisoner Henry can direct others to do things. Even if it's like he's just target he knows he has a kind of chaos magic around him and he's just targeting it. He's not saying, "Hey prisoner, stab other prisoner." He's just like, "Please let chaos happen and let me be able to walk right through it." Yeah. Yeah. Um because there's the whole thing about him giving the one dude cancer just by touching him and what stuff like that when he was in the prison um in the cell with that nazi oh right dude the nazi went to go like touch him or do whoa whoa whatever and he had that line like you don't want to touch me and then the next thing we see it's like the next day he had cancer in his like entire body i forgot about that weird i this show introduced a lot of things that I thought would come back. That's when I totally forgot about. But, like, there's things that seem like they are going to be plot points, and then they aren't. For instance, that prison guard who ends up, uh, yeah. like, shooting up the entire prison and then gets shot in the process. He keeps mentioning he's got a pregnant wife at home. And I kept expecting her to show up. Her yeah. to expect justice. Maybe there's some spooky thing going on with her and the baby like but we never saw them which is weird i kept waiting for that other shoe to drop and it never did but you know what i did like you remember it's like real early in the series molly is trying to find more drugs and her like high school drug dealer he's like i'm out but you can try this other guy and she goes to that guy's house and it's like all these kids in masks that are yeah. having a weird trial. That, that I think was maybe one of the scariest moments for yes, me. Yes, I love that. And it's also maybe one of the least Stephen King I, I, type of things. I couldn't that judge I that of. very well. But I like that it was just weird and she just walked into it, did her business and walked out. I wanted more just like weird stuff happening on the periphery that isn't plot relevant but contributes to that like kind of eerie feeling yeah. around the town i wanted more inconsequential like set dressing weirdness like that as opposed to these like the i understand it gives the prison guard like a lot of character to know that he's like a father to be and so he's got real stakes to like mm-hmm. i have to fix this place i have to get out of here but then it leads you to believe, are, is his wife going to show up? And she never does. Yeah. Um, 
so with that scene in particular, I was looking up a list of all the Easter eggs mm-hmm. in Castle Rock and that because I was gonna write a, a couple of them did it down and be like, here's some of the ones that I liked. I spotted I, some, yeah. I kind of c- c- caught and I got to, they they went down like episode by episode mm-hmm. and listed like they used this song and this other Stephen oh, King cool. adaption and stuff like that. It was, it was it was a lot. So I was just like, I'm not going to write any of these down. There's too yeah. much here. Um, I think my favorite little Easter egg was that Molly's slogan for her real estate business was live like a king. <laughs> But uh, with that scene in particular, that the website that I found mentioned, like, this might be the least Stephen King thing that we see in the show. This is not really his type of weird mm-hmm. horror. But if you squint your eyes, maybe you can see Children of the Corn. Or... I didn't know that was also his. He's I, so I, I pervasive. Know. It's like if you have a, like a phrase you've been using your whole life and then somebody says, oh yeah, Shakespeare originally wrote that. <laughs> like, what else is Stephen King around me? But you you know where he gets the name Castle Rock from, right? Is it a real main place? It's a reference to Lord of the Flies. Oh, that makes sense. Which that scene of these children having this kind of like weird is very, very Lord of the Flies. So it it might be more of a reference to that um, is is, is what that website was saying. Now I forget what it was because I don't have it pulled up on my laptop. But uh, yeah, that that I I think was a really interesting scene, especially because they're they're having this like court session and yeah. Molly, who just happens to show up and and mm-hmm. just wasn't even supposed to be be there, she ends up being the like perpetrator of the crime that they're all talking about, yeah. and the, and they're just like she's here right now, and they all like point at her, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I hate this. I'm so scared. I don't want this to ever happen in real life. <laughs> more of that. More just like you're. The characters yeah. are going about their normal business it. through other weirdness around town. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was dark, but I wanted it to get weirder. So I, so you mentioned the prison g- 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 guard, and you mentioned mm-hmm. this scene that you were kind of hoping to come back. I really wanted to, to, to follow more of the prison warden through yeah, this. Yeah, I that liked was... her a lot and she just so disappears I. for many episodes in a row. Yeah. Um so like that that is one of the references that I did catch is when she first oh. gets there and they're giving her the tour. They're like, "Oh yeah, Castle Rock has had multiple wardens da- da- die on the j- j- job and and stuff like that." And they they say, "And right back there you can still see the bullet hole where Warden Norton and they stopped." That's the warden in Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, and it's it just like, oh, okay, neat. That You know, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the same prison and stuff. Um, yeah, I like that kind of continuity. Like, this is a world where every Stephen King thing is real and has happened. And whatever, like, you'd finish up whatever you're talking about, but yeah. I want to talk about Jackie. Yeah, or or j- just not even that it's happened, but it's like, hey, these might be the same characters that you know. We don't necessarily yeah. know if it's the yeah. exact same ones from that adaption that mm-hmm. you do know, though. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Let's talk about Jackie. I loved her, especially because this is such a bleak show. Like, in a way I didn't really like, like, I get it. This mm-hmm. whole town is supposed to be cursed so of course nobody around there is very happy but it's the whole show just feels kind of grim and bleary in a way i i didn't really respond to kind of colored like that in the cinematography too it's it's like late fall winter so things are like gray and brown and white and it's just the show feels gray yeah but jackie's the one person who's like this is kind of exciting I kind of like it. I want to learn more. And it's morbid, but at least it's morbid in a fun way. Like, she really brightens up the show whenever she shows up. Yeah. And I loved her, but I like that they did use her sparingly. So that when she did show up, you did, like, really appreciate what she was doing. Mm -hmm. 
I I really like the concept that she is like some niece that Jack Torrance from The Shining had. And after that huge disaster in The Shining, her family's like, oh, we're not going to talk about Uncle Jack anymore. And she's like, what? What happened to Uncle Jack? What is it? And like she finds out about but the But she's story also she's named like, after him. Like, uh, no, she no, she named herself. Her name is Diane. She mentions oh, this right. and she's like. I was so enamored by this weird legend of Uncle Jack. She's like, just to sort of spite my parents, I took his name, and now I go by Jackie Torrance. <laughs> I like. Right. I freaking got about that. Seeing like the after effect, the Richter, like um, the aftershocks of real serious events in these stories. Like, if something like that happened, yeah, you would have kind of like a weird fan of it. The way somebody's super into true crime or the way somebody might be really enamored by a weird old family legend like that, you get Jackie. Mm -hmm. I liked her a lot. And I like the kind of cap at the end of things where she's going to try to be a writer, too. Yeah, that's um, like I it's 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 weird. There's so many interesting characters in this show or just things Mm -hmm. happening that I think the show might have even been better served by being from one of these other perspectives that would have been nice um like i would have loved having jackie kind of narrate the whole thing and it's her writing her book or her article or stuff like that she's documenting which is oddly kind of what they do in the riverdale show oh she is like the jughead of this isn't she yeah which is kind of why i liked her because she's yeah. sitting there like i really like all of this weird mystery stuff and murder stuff that's happening in this t- town i'm gonna write about it <laughs> um I, or the two I, I i they're not detectives but the 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 deaf was he deaf or mute the guy that I'm, had to speak in this hind language i'm so d- 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 dumb i'm not sure i okay just to stop for a second i liked those two a lot though i did they too. were really interesting and i think what happened was that odin branch is his name which is a cool name he had deafened himself on purpose right so that he could like really hear the word of god but it's not clear when he did that it seemed like it would be fairly recent and that he was not born deaf like he did that to himself but mm-hmm. his voice i imagine wouldn't sound like that if he had been able to hear for most of his life i'm not he sure has... how that works because I, I i know i've i've interacted with very very few people who are yeah deaf but yeah one of the things i do remember from one of them is that they they could speak, but it was often like they, they weren't exactly sure how to pronounce things, which yes. would make sense. But it may have been so long that he's been deaf that he kind of yeah. lost it. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I, I was know. ambiguous about. Like, how long ago did this happen? Because yeah. up until the point where he speaks, it seems recent. I don't know. That timeline is just a little ambiguous for me. Yeah. I, he seemed like a character that was almost out of time. If that yeah. makes sense, because I he had feels a, very otherworldly. I had a theory that he was uh, Henry D. Davers' son, just older. What, what was huh. his name? What was the, the... Wendell? Wendell, yeah. Because and especially because he is named after a Norse god, and Grandma Ruth is all about Norse gods. Exactly. What? No, I definitely see what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, so there, there, there's that hint. They look similar, um, and there is this thing of we see Wendell get off of the bus, kind of more t- t- towards the middle end of the show because he's starting to get the like tinnitus stuff where he has the ringing in his ear. Yeah. So he's obviously prone to hearing it as well. Mm-hmm. That may have been the first couple aspects. We know there's this like jumping back and forth between dimensions slash molly's almost shining powers that allow her to see into these other dimensions if not in like past timelines Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering if he somehow uses that to his advantage to kind of explore this and study it and he's yeah he's who knows yeah i i liked him they were also characters that I would have liked to see it from their perspective of just One, they are the like pariahs, the outcasts that understand it, yeah, but 
seem crazy because no one else really really believes them and it's their yeah. j- j- job to be like look guys it's actually happening it's actually real we will prove it mm-hmm and while we're talking about odin branch i just want to say i don't know if i've ever seen so great a sign language performance in anything else i've watched there's a lot of time with him performing yeah speaking sign language and then you've got his sidekick there like explaining you know translating for him it's great oh like i've never seen that much concentrated sign language in something it's, before and he's so emotive when he does it it's it's a great performance yeah. i really liked seeing it it's interesting for me because yeah i i think i understand immediately and i like that aspect about his character i also don't know anything about sign language or what it's either. actually supposed to look like so it's this weird thing of like okay i can understand just visually that that's supposed to be sign language but i don't know if that actually is sign language like i don't know if, how accurate that is if they just had him do a bunch of random movements or if he's I, actually i don't speaking think they american would. sign language i don't think that's Sign language I mean, I, is gaining more and more popularity. I don't think anybody would make it up when it's easy enough for you to sure. learn and like write a sign language scene. I guess because of their characters and mm-hmm. how eccentric they are, I wouldn't put it past them for having their own kind of way of talking about oh, okay. it or their own so like. It is a sign language, but it is not the American sign language we're all familiar I mean, the, with. That could be one potential explanation if it is mm-hmm. not, in fact, American sign language. But yeah. It, it's just one of those things of just like, I'm not educated enough to know if that is actual sign language. Yeah, yeah. I. This seems like a nice, uh, I had something else I wanted to talk about, but I'll come back to it later. This is a nice transition point to Ruth. I... She's treated kind of ambiguously in that it's like 95% certain she just has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. But there's a little – like when she's talking to Molly on the bridge, she's like, I've been here before. I've done this before. And that's the first time that is happening in this timeline. So there's a little ambiguity to it. Like is she really like supernaturally lost out there? But I liked that typically it seems like there might be supernatural things happening to her, but not within her. It seems, I I I would guess, like just sincere Alzheimer's. I I would think it's actually maybe an effect of uh, Dr. Deaver. Maybe that's what we'll call him. There's Dr. and Lawyer. Prisoner Deaver. Yeah, that's kind of demeaning. Prisoner Deaver. Dr. Uh, Deaver and Deaver Esquire. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I feel like maybe her alts, her air co- quotes, Alzheimer's mm-hmm. might be a result of Dr. Deaver being in their universe. And that's just one of the things happening. But it might be a slow burn. Huh. And I don't know if it actually is Alzheimer's, like you yeah. kind of mentioned. I wonder if it's her just, yeah, just being displaced in the time stream. Uh, and yeah. that is the thing that's happening to her rather than, oh, she got cancer or she accidentally, like, not accidentally, but just, like, is driven mad to the p- point where she shoots up a prison. Or, mm-hmm. like, just this is the thing that is specifically happening to her. Yeah, like, it might be real Alzheimer's, but it's not caused by genetics or whatever things may really cause well, it i'm not a doctor like sure. alternate I mean, universe henry t there, there there is that that yeah it might just be actual alzheimer's but i i was thinking of it's not actually alzheimer's what's actually happening to her is she's just being displaced in the time stream mm-hmm. and that is what is happening to her as a result of and it's just it's it's a it's a slow burn where she doesn't really notice it at first or maybe she sees a detail here and there and just as she gets older or as she i guess gets in closer proximity to dr daver that it just it gets worse and worse and worse to the point where she doesn't even like see dr daver she sees her late husband and you're right it does get worse when it's around him yeah uh yeah the 
I think the way the show goes is when it first shows up, you're like, you don't know exactly what it is. And then it seems like it is just more a legitimate medical thing. And then it does end kind of ambiguously. Like how much of this is a weird supernatural effect of, Mm -hmm. you know, this cross dimensional thing going on. I don't know, but if they were to tell all the stuff about it being a legitimate disease seemed very believable to me. Yeah. And I liked as near as I can tell, it seemed like it could be realistic. And I liked that we at least had the opportunity to see whether it is or not. There is at least for a time where it looks like this is just a real like human concern amid everything else weird and spooky going on. She Mm -hmm. just has a disease. She is getting older. Things are bad for her of just human accord, not because of any curse. Yeah. And of course we have yet to see if that's actually the case, but I liked that there was that ingredient in there of this isn't mystery. It's she's just sick. Yeah. Um, they they had a lot that I think they could really do with her that I, mm-hmm. I think would be fantastic because uh, one I liked the portrayal of of how she sees things yeah that was, yeah I like that, that a lot that was scary in its own right of just yes. how chaotic it was and how fast things changed like yeah. there's there's the the scene where she's c- kind of running from Doctor Deaver because he see at that point we still think he's the devil um and she's going from room to room to try and run from him but every mm-hmm. room she enters is another point in her life when something yeah. was happening in that household so she goes from like her wedding to a birthday party just all yeah. in the same house as she's going from one end of her living room to mm-hmm. the next and it it just it felt claustrophobic and that much yes. more like get out of there come on what are you doing you can do it like get out of there um and yeah like i i I felt stuff like that was really interesting to see but then she also has this added like she she has this thing of like we she doesn't necessarily know what time it is or what year it is or stuff like that and so they have this aspect that they can play with um of showing us flashbacks or things that are happening out of order that they could have played with more and in a sense confused us Mm-hmm. To 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 be like, well, we we don't really know what's happening, and that's that's how it's coming. That like, if they went that direction, they would have had that really neat thing with all the ch- ch- chess pieces. Like, if you can see a chess piece yeah. somewhere in the frame or in the background, yeah. that would be your thing to know. This is actually happening right now. It's not a a thing, and they they don't really explore that. Other than for mm-hmm. her character to ground her, yeah, I but not the audience. I, that would be interesting if that was something for the audience too. Yeah, yeah. I that might have been my favorite episode was the episode all about her like going back through her yeah. memories and the fact that she has to keep reliving all of these terrible times with her husband, Doc, um, Pastor Deaver. And she wants to escape, like she wants to just pack the bag and leave. And he's like, no, you can't because you didn't. You can't change anything. You have to relive this exactly the way that it happened. And then she accidentally shoots Alan. And then she relives the memory of Alan coming to her door like, hey, it's been a long time, but like, I I just wanted to check on you and see if you're okay. And she hugs him and she says, don't leave. The same rule applies to that. It always will happen the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. That memory is also locked for her. It happens for bad and it happens for good. Like she may have lost Alan. The Alan in her memories is alive and he's never going to die. That I really loved. That was a real that was one of the strongest emotional turns in the entire show. Yeah. I agree. I thought that was a beautiful episode. Um this was produced by J.J. Abrams. Yes, it who, was. Who, again, we mentioned earlier that we love Lost. And he's mm-hmm. had quite a storied career. But when I think of Lost, when I think of him, I think of Lost, even if he wasn't very involved after uh, the early years. Except for the fact that Terry O'Quinn was in it. I'm watching the show and I'm like, I don't know if I see a lot of Abrams in this until we get to that episode. And it reminded me a lot of The Constant. Yep. Yep. 
it's got that kind of which is also if if you, if you haven't seen lost you should absolutely watch it because it's a fucking fantastic show and melissa yeah, and i don't, will defend it to its death don't listen to what anybody else tells you this but, is a show it's not about mysteries it's about the characters the character relationships and arcs are fantastic exactly but that's that episode in specific is one of if not like top 10 at tv episodes Top ever. It's five, amazing. top three for the series itself. Yeah. It's fantastic. I don't know if you could successfully watch it on its own, not knowing anything else from Lost, but it's so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Good stuff. Um, I mean, there, uh, there were some... I, I, I guess not necessarily lens flares. JJ Abrams <laughs> is also known for his lens flares. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, there was the scene when we we're first introduced to uh, the lawyer, Deaver, um, mm -hmm. where there is the like sunshine behind him, so it's hard to see his face, yeah. and he's kind of yeah. moving back and forth to like block mm -hmm. the light and stuff like that. There's there's some stuff like that. Um, anything else you wanted to, to talk about, kind of story wise? that you thought was interesting. Uh, I, this was something I wanted to bring up earlier when you were talking about how you wanted to see things from other characters' perspectives. Yes. This is a neat turn I was not expecting, but I was really pleased when it showed up. That couple that Molly was trying to sell the house to, yeah. it goes back to them and they ended up buying the house and you spend like a good 20 minutes with that couple. That was a great turn. What's, um, oh, fuck, what is that? There's a movie. It's like a dark comedy. There's now a TV show with the same name, multiple seasons. It takes place in Minnesota. Oh, is this Fargo? Yes, that that it's it's North Dakota, me. but yes, ah, sure, sure, they're all the same to me. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, they that really reminded me of like a more fargo style horror or show or yeah like because it's comedy it's got that kind of it is so preposterous it does get almost into like a black comedy as opposed to like kind of a horror drama it was and it has that kind of ridiculous where they're like we're we're, we're gonna make a murder motel a murder yeah. bed and breakfast and i was like okay yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd as, like as them a lot. This giant mannequin with an axe in its head. <laughs> it's got that whole like you can tell this is going to be terrible. Like you know these guys are going to be dead like almost as soon as you see them again for the second time. They're so fun. Like the first time they show up and you think it's just there to like support Molly and her real estate business. Like I, narratively, that's what they're there for. And yeah. then when they come back. And they fall prey to the Castle Rock curse. I I liked that a lot. It was I I almost would have liked to see them last longer, and that just a be like a longer, running yeah. gag. Like have that be the comedic relief where they're just completely oblivious to like all of this stuff, like all of this this evil stuff happening, but it's still happening like right around them. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, oh, wasn't this neat that this guy died here? And they just like are just they just completely don't care and just like are tr trying to like run their bed and breakfast it's been mm -hmm. like murder yeah <laughs> another thing that woman in that like um the, the, that that couple that comes to stay the night with them is that the woman that dr deaver is married to in the alternate universe oh i, I don't know I I think there was uh, like there was too much time between those episodes for me in my own watching that like I didn't have her face really locked in my mind. I'm like, I'm not sure, but that might be her again. I have no idea. Uh, I'm on their Wikipedia page, but it's not it's listing out the cast by the actors names, not the character names. Yeah. And, and I, I don't, don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if like. <laughs> Her as the bed and breakfast guest had a name, and her name is like Marin or something like that in the alternate universe. I don't know. It looked like it might have been the same actress to me, and I thought that might have been a, a cool twist. Or just like that's something I like about alternate universes is just yeah. reusing characters in kind of unusual ways. Like, oh they, yeah, there's no reason they couldn't also serve a loosely similar purpose in this other universe. Yeah. So they they also do the the thing where like the characters don't necessarily need to look alike 
in no. the thing. It's not like because I mean, both of the Davers one is this like tall, white, skinny doctor, and one is this like man. Yeah, just like almost looks not malnourished, but his like he's just he's gaunt. Yeah, he looks haunted, and I was. Well, I'll say one thing about the alternate universe episode, whether you agreed with it narratively or not, it was so nice to just get to see that actor do something different. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Or um, do anything at all besides just like stand there and look at he's things. He's so <laughs> creepy, but he's so creepy Which in he's... the same way for so long. I was really the, excited so that, when he started. That actor's, like, name, that actor's name is Bill Skarsgård. He also mm. played It. He he played oh! Pennyworth in the new movie, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Pennywise, not Pennyworth. Um, <laughs> he's gonna play Alfred. Yeah, he's next. gonna play, he's gonna play what all if the Alfred movies. became it. Like, what if he became the Joker? <laughs> this has to be like a DC Elseworld somewhere. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, he's like he had that kind of character down pat, just this mm-hmm. like weird like creepy not really doing much but he's just getting yeah Yeah. he's so vacant and so that's what makes the alternate universe so effective for me you see that this like vacant man is a doctor a very successful research doctor with this full rich life yeah and then he was put in the dark for 27 years and that's why he is who he is yeah scary stuff crazy i don't know if i have much other story-wise stuff that i want to talk about other than the fact that i thought it was not strange that it existed but weird that they didn't talk about it more that the town is racist like it's that... just it's just a thing and it looks like it's go- go- going to be i mean it, you, you could also kind of explain it away as like they still blame henry Deaver for but there's really no other black characters in the show you, besides him and his son there's him odin branch i think like one or two kids in that weird court of children yeah yeah and i it's just it's it seems like they're just it's it just seems like i mean sure racism is still a thing and it still yeah, happens yeah. out there unfortunately but it just felt weird that they didn't address it more in this show to me yeah yeah, and I was wondering at the beginning, are they going to wrap this up together? Like, is part of this dark, like, stain on Castle Rock, does it not just go to, like, murders and disasters and accidents? Yeah. Does it go towards prejudice also? Yeah. And they didn't really get into it. And I don't know, like, what the preferable answer to that question would be, to explain it away with this dark magic or to have it be I mean, just, like, yeah, just a town really behind the times and treating other people well. Something I could see maybe <laughs> happened is that that they were maybe thinking of doing that, and then the writer's room sat there and was like, maybe that's not such a good idea yeah, if we, yeah. like, <laughs> explore that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't like, oh boy, that, that let's learn a, about yeah, this. Yeah. It's yeah. just a little odd that it seems like it might be something in, like, the first two episodes, and then it isn't. But it I is, don't exactly, disagree yeah. with the fact that it isn't. Yeah, so... I just thought it was strange that it was just like, it's a thing. Characters seem like they're oddly racist towards uh, lawyer Deaver. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Move on. We're not going to mention it again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, Yeah, I I think that's kind of all. Oh, you said you were wrapping up talking about the story. Did you want to talk about anything on the technical side of things? Um... You know, I, was some... I don't I don't know if I really have a, 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 anything that stands out. I really liked the sound design for this show. Interesting. Talk and about I, that. And I think having the captions on made me think about it more because the captions are labeling things that like m- I might have just completely glossed over to begin mm-hmm. with. Like I wouldn't have stopped and paid attention to, you know, howling noise if they didn't tell me howling noise was there specifically. Like the way there's like that ringing, that voice of God ringing that they hear. And that also kind of distorts other things. Like, I think there's a mm-hmm. part where like somebody's screaming and like the last couple syllables of the screaming just get like looped and distorted for a while. I don't remember exactly when, but yeah, the way they played with sound in this show is associated with this kind of weird, like, 
wormhole in the forest and hearing yeah. the voice of God sort of thing. I liked that. I thought there were a lot of beautiful shots in this show. Yeah, there's a, a lot of good like landscape stuff mm-hmm. and just that like uh, that like northeastern kind of. I, I I don't even know what to call it, but like this like I, stuff that I think of when I think of like the Salem witch trials and that okay. almost like colonial style church buildings and yeah and stuff like that. They have a lot of that. Like, yeah, everything Maine looks too, very like. So cold and stark and Mm -hmm. old weird i puritanical yeah 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 you get that vibe um there's i think it's like episode four where they part of just the bad stuff happening around town is that there's major forest fires just on the outskirts of the town and it's not really brought up that's a reference to anything from stephen king's i don't know it's a little odd because it's not brought up before that episode and it doesn't seem to continue much outside that that episode but in that episode they're like forest fires are still continuing and i'm like when did they start you mentioned that yeah i i think that was an interesting one because i've been in areas where uh there's a fire you know in the, in the next state and just the wind has brought all of the smoke into yeah. that town and it's hazy you can't see a thing mm. this if i'm remembering correctly was more of like a yellow haze to yeah. things yeah it's got that kind of yellow orangey haze over everything i thought that was shot beautifully yeah. and i like that they didn't just tell you oh well there's also wildfires like they 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 showed the effects to this town. There's a lot of people walking around with like masks on that day uh-huh. to like keep yeah. themselves from breathing in the smoke. And like the sky looks weird. I like that they, I would have liked that to be more of a thing throughout the entire season that there's also the threats of fires might be coming this way. I wished it was more than one episode, but I like the way that one episode, I like what they did it's, with it. It's an interesting thing because I think they do a lot of like individual going crazy like the weird Mm -hmm. things are happening around town but there's never i i don't feel like there's enough of a sense of impending doom yeah i I think would have been a good just like hey there's these weird things that are happening in town and those Mm -hmm. are escalating those are getting real bad but not only do we have to fix and solve those things, but there's this like forest fire that is like racing towards our town that would have been that that also would have been something to deal, or you know, maybe in the end it amounts to n- 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 nothing. Mm-hmm. But just to have that like overarching on the entire yeah. show would have been been this like c- clock is ticking. We need to d- do yeah. something, you know. And I would have liked there to be more done with this kind of darkness in Castle Rock beyond just a lot of assorted like murders and disasters, like the wildfires. What if there's like a really bad, you know, not plague, but like a rough flu strikes the entire town. What if like I mean, they a had, bunch of crops had are that failing? Plague. I'm just like these birds are constantly the, dying and the falling bir- out of the sky. Yeah, the bird the birds were weird. I don't know if I'd watch through this season again, but if I did, I would pay more attention to what those birds are up to. Hmm. They just seem to be doing that thing where there's like 5,000 of them all in one big thing being like, yeah, and then just one dive bombs and they're like, oh, very the third one this week. God damn it. Mm hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just weird things all around are happening. And yeah, I'm I'm kind of wondering if it was a little too much if especially since this is getting a second season like i don't i i don't know if the show can really survive on the merits of ooh this town is spooky it's weird things are happening like i i kind of want there to be one gigantic mystery that they're trying mm-hmm. to solve and along the way each season is maybe a smaller mystery that helps them to solve the bigger one yeah um and yeah like i i just i i I feel like they try to pack it chock full of everything, every little reference, every little news thing you mm-hmm. hear in the back go around, or every character, or every uh, moment. I mean, I mean, they have stuff that references pet cemetery mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like, 
like I, I g g get it. You're wanting to reference a bunch of Stephen King stuff, but did you really need to reference that stuff now? What mm -hmm. if season one was more focused on it references, and season two was Pet Cemetery, and season three was this and that, and you, you, yeah, you know, and they just they take it a little more like that. Mm -hmm. I think that may have focused it a little more. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Would one final question? Yes. Would you have preferred if this was an anthology show like you originally thought it might be? Good question. Because I, I think I really would have liked to see that, especially because I was hoping this would get scarier. I was expecting more horror, and this is more just like mystery, suspense, general eeriness. I feel like you can deliver like a really like short, powerful, like horror punch if you're doing an anthology like that. And you can play with different varieties of weirdness. I probably just need to find another horror anthology series. It's not like they're not out there. We've got old Twilight Zone, new Twilight Zone. Yeah. Tales from the Crypt. Like there's plenty mm -hmm. out there for me to watch. So I guess maybe we didn't need another one. But I don't know. Um, I, I, I like watching this. I was not just oh well uh, kyle did not tell me the correct thing turns out this is not an anthology series like i kind of wished it was i think in the short term maybe it would have served it better mm -hmm. in the long term if they're wanting to have this run multiple seasons i don't know if it would have held up yeah i don't know if you can do an anthology for that long especially based off the works of one creator and his themes and tropes and mm -hmm. stuff like that because then i feel like you're gonna start to get into okay i've seen this kind of thing before you know, yeah you've seen this weird kind of creeping religious tinged horror mm -hmm. um and but, but yeah like i i think it's still like i like the idea of an anthology about this town and the weird mm -hmm. things that happen in this town the like horrific things that have happened whether it be in the past or in the future or in the present day or one episode is entirely about this couple that runs a murder bed and bre yeah. bre breakfast and the next one is about um, the prison warden and all of that stuff or one is about the prison and the multiple mm -hmm. wardens. They've, like, I think I would like to see that stuff, but again, I just I, I don't know if that would hold up in the long term and give enough variety. Yeah. Good question, though. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Um, do you have any recommendations for people who may have liked this or liked aspects of this and want to find something else? Ah, uh, it when I first started watching it, and this took me a little while to get into. Really, mm -hmm. just like ah, uh, I wish I could be watching X Files right now. Like X Files to me is still the king of good spooky television. <laughs> There you go. X Files is and, still good, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Stephen King wrote an episode of X Files. Really? Yeah, it's about a spooky doll. Spooky doll. <laughs> and also, Scully goes on a vacation to Maine. Surprise. And there she encounters a spooky doll. It's Does a she weird go to episode. Castle Rock? I don't remember. I haven't seen this in years. I might rewatch it soon after this. That would be. Really crazy if Castle Rock also existed in the X Files universe. I was okay. So Terry O'Quinn keeps smoking these cigarettes, and I never like could see it close enough to see what the label was. But I'm like, that's probably Morley cigarettes, which is one of those just stock brands that like prop houses have. And every time you know somebody wants to mention a cigarette brand, and they're like, well, I don't want to use a real one. Uh, Morley cigarettes. Like somebody used it once and everybody decided this is the industry. That. Yeah, this is the industry standard for fake cigarettes. And that's what the cigarette smoking man, like this huge big bad of X-Files, that's what he smoked. And so people will look at other shows where that appears and it's like, well, you could kind of look at this like it's in the same universe as the X-Files because that brand is still there. What that? What if they did an X-Files episode on the different universes that Morley cigarettes are in? Like, what are they hiding? How are they in all of these universes? There must be some conspiracy here. <laughs> I feel like there might be an episode of X-Files that is about Morley cigarettes and like something spooky going on there. But it's not the alternate universes. That's funny. Uh, 
Any other recommendations? Um, this is very different in tone, but if you want a spooky town, if you just want weird things happening around a weird town, I don't think there's a better version of that than Gravity Falls, the Disney Channel cartoon. <laughs> Gravity Falls is so good at it. mystery. Oh, we're going to have to watch it someday, Kyle. It's a really good mystery. And when it goes a little darker, when it goes a little scarier, mm -hmm. it's really effective at it. There you go. Despite being a Disney Channel cartoon, like good it is stuff. a serious, legitimate, great show. Uh, so I have two recommendations. Mm -hmm. The first one I already mentioned, and it came up in the middle of the show, Fargo. Yeah, I think it, like that's a weird town where things are happening, and it's more, it's maybe more crime based, but especially mm -hmm. with the TV show, they do a neat thing where every season is a brand new story with new characters, all of that stuff. So they don't really have much cross uh, over mm -hmm. there. I'm wondering if Castle Rock will follow a similar format where I'd season like two would just be, yeah, it's taking place in Castle Rock, but it's not the one you saw in season one. It's a different mm -hmm. version. Um, Like what if season two takes place? place in dr D D D D haver's original castle rock and the things that mm. are happening there that would be interesting to see um so something something like that i think might be neat um it is more of a dark comedy and there's more ridiculous like murder bed and br and br breakfast type of stuff mm -hmm. uh, but i think that would be a good recommendation yeah. to go check out uh, my second recommendation is actually the one that I thought of as I was watching the show. There's a comic book called Nailbiter. Oh, that I, I think don't know this. A lot of people would love. It's published by Image Comics, written by Joshua Williamson, and I'm blanking on who does the art. Um, but it's a fantastic book. It's only six volumes, mm -hmm. uh, so it's pretty short read. You can read it all in a week or or so. Um. And it is about a small town in Oregon uh, named Buckaroo. Is the Ugh. name Buckaroo, Oregon, and it is a town where sixteen different serial killers all call home. Oh, uh, and so there's this idea of, hey, why that town? What is going on with that town specifically? That there are. 16 plus serial killers that have all come from that one town um whether or not they stayed in that t t t t town you know mm -hmm. they, they they've all come from buckaroo and so the, st the story starts with this c cop who figures it out he's like i know why i know what is happening it's a giant mm -hmm. conspiracy i and and he he's he's like i'm gonna call my best friend who i want here with me to break the story mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna c c call him can you get here as soon as possible and he's like yep i will be there tomorrow he gets there and his friend is missing uh. and all of that stuff and so he's just like well shit like i don't i don't know what to do i, I don't know what's happening here but something is happening and i need to find my friend um, yeah and so he's, at the start, more concerned about finding his friend. But mm -hmm. yes, in the, in the end, it is about kind of uncovering what is happening with this town. Is it some cult? Is it something in the water? Is it uh, who knows what, you know? Is it some experiments gone wrong? Is, is it something else? So it's, it's, it's good. I highly recommend that book. And it is like Stephen King mixed with... Uh, like Hannibal Lecter type of stuff. There's there's the character of Nail b b b b b b Biter. He is one of the serial killers. Mm -hmm. Was c c c c caught red-handed and walked mm. in in his trial. So he's now this like almost celebrity thing. Mm. Um, but he he kind of knows what's happening and he is kind of giving out information real slowly of like maybe you should go check out this thing you know maybe you should go talk to this person but it's also really funny because there's someone in the town who runs a murder store and it is like mm. a gift shop slash museum almost like the bed and, and huh. 
breakfast where they're like, hmm. there is so much murder that has happened here by the replica axe from this mur- mur- murder by this thing, you know. <laughs> so I, th- I think you all would like that a lot. Neat. Those are my recommendations. Okay. Yeah. Kyle, it's time for pitches. Woo! What do you got for me this week, Melissa? So next week, uh, we record on Sunday, so we will be mm-hmm. recording on Mother's Day. Yeah. So I've got some movies about moms. They movies are all moms. movies, but they're all very different movies from each other. <laughs> uh, so when I first decided, oh, oh, I looked at the calendar. It'll be Mother's Day. Let me do mom-themed picks. The first one I thought of was Terminator. <laughs> When, when you think of your mom, what movie do you think of? <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> these, these aren't like movies related to my moms. They're just general pop culture moms. I'm like, well, you know who's real high up there? Sarah Connor. There you go. So I am pitching Terminator and T2 Judgment Day. Okay. Uh, there's been two. several films in the Terminator lineage. These two, I've heard, are the best. T2 is something I have heard people raving about my entire life. Mm-hmm. People still love it. It still really holds up. I've never seen it. And I saw Terminator once, I think, and didn't really get much out of it. But I'd be intrigued to try it again. So go. these were from 1984 and 1991. They are directed both by James Cameron. And, you know, we mostly know the story. There's a robot sent from the past. There's a robot sent from the future to the past. Like, hey, in the future, some guy named John Connor, like, really screws things up for people. I'm here to stop you, his mother, Sarah Connor, from ever giving birth to him. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't even have a boyfriend. I'm not pregnant. What's this? Make this robot stop chasing me. And there's, like, a soldier also from the future who is sent back to protect her. And, of course... That's that's John's dad. And then in the second movie, a really cool liquid metal robot comes back from the future. Like, OK, like, what was that Trying that show? Get... Allison Mack, where she 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 turns into the liquid yeah. puddle. He's like <laughs> the best possible version of Alex Mack. Like people yeah. are still Alex talking Mack, about it. what a good visual effect this was. And I've seen clips of it in like, you know, movie documentaries and things like that. I want to really see it. Cool. I want to sit down and watch me some Terminator. Sounds good. So that's Mother's Terminator Day. 1 and 2, right? 1 and 2. And T- uh, Terminator 2 is called Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Judgment Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. That's pitch number one. So what is pitch number two? Pitch number two. Uh, another top pop culture mom is Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch. How familiar are you with the Brady Bunch? Was this something you watched on Nick at Night growing up? I've seen a number of episodes. Okay. It's not a hard premise to get. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. In 1995, there was a movie made called The Brady Bunch Movie, and it is what if the Bradys existed in the 90s exactly like they existed back in the 70s? They are exactly the same, just picked up, plopped into the 90s, and they are acting like it's decades ago. This is a comedy film. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a comedy about just the Bradys completely out of time, but still nonetheless their bright, sunshiny selves and how they bump up against 90s, 90s culture. culture. Yeah, this is a movie I loved when I was a kid, and but nobody really talks about it. When I last I watched it, I think I've ever of, heard of it. Exactly. Like sometimes I forget about it because nobody is talking about it. And then I remember it all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, yes, that movie. I love that movie. So this is it's got kind of an Austin Powers vibe to it. Just somebody fully living out of time and stuck in the 90s. And it's Mm -hmm. so 90s. It's almost like you're watching two period pieces at once. I go. remember this being really funny, really charming, and I'd be intrigued to rewatch it, especially with somebody who's never heard of this thing. Cool. Okay. The, is it called the Brady Bunch movie? Or... Yes, it is just called the Brady Bunch oh, movie. You have it on DVD. Sweet. I own this DVD. I also own a very Brady sequel. I loved okay. these things when I was a kid. <laughs> I might okay. be, you know, one of the few people in the world who own this DVD. I really don't think this is popular, but I remember it being good. I think it's an underrated gem. Okay. And pitch number three is Brave, the Pixar film from 2012. 
This is, I had a mother-son story. I had a mother and exactly three boys and three girls story. This is a mother-daughter story. There are boys in it, but they mostly just get up to antics. It's not really about their relationship with mom. It's all about Princess Merida in this centuries-old Scottish Highlands, and she is Mm -hmm. set to take the throne, and her mom's trying to teach her how to be a proper royal lady, and she's like, I just want to go out there and, like, ride my horse and shoot arrows, and I don't want to suit her, and I don't want to be this responsible, and she falls into a magic spell that turns her mom into a bear. So half the movie is her with her mom as a human lady, and half the movie is her with her mom as a bear, just learning to understand her mom better now that they can't Couldn't talk to each other. bear the sight of her mom. <laughs> <laughs> Communication was bad before, and now it gets worse because her mom can just, like, roar, you know, roar and <laughs> paw around at things. Yeah. And she just has to try to figure out how to reverse the curse and get her family all back together. Yeah. Cool. So this is another movie I own on Blu-ray. This is a really gorgeous movie. Again, Pixar's great, but I think this is one of the movies from them that is less talked about and i haven't watched it in several years i'd want to revisit i want to revisit this one sounds good um okay so let's see mother's day picks we got terminator one and two which i still think is hilarious (laughs) it's appropriate it's got a great mother figure we got the brady bunch movie uh and then we have brave from pixar that's pitch number one two and three i want to do (laughs) <laughs> yeah i want to do uh oh gosh deciding between either brave or the brady bunch movie real i thought you'd go terminator because i know you're a sci-fi guy i mean i am a sci-fi g- guy sure she's she's a badass m- mom uh i don't know if that's really a good mother's day pick though hmm. if that makes sense um but maybe something more lighthearted, like either okay. of these two films. I guess Brave has a lot of action and stuff in it. Yeah, as well. it's kind um, of an action adventure, lighthearted family, and the Brady Bunch movie is just like a weird comedy. I I think I want to watch Brave again. Okay, I've only seen yeah. it once, and I mm-hmm. remember there being some in, a lot of really interesting theories. Uh, with the magic scene yeah. when the c- c- curse happens. Because I know Pixar does the thing where they like reference a bunch of their other mo- movies yes. and things in the back go g- around. Uh, so I think that might be some interesting stuff to talk about. Okay, Let's do that Brave. sounds fun. Yeah, that's a really good pick for Mother's Day. Hell and I yes. And I don't think we've covered a Pixar movie before. You did a Reactor Core episode when The Incredibles 2 came out, but we haven't done a straight-up review show about any of them. Is Big Hero 6 no, not No, that's, that's Disney. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. We will do Brave, then, for next mm-hmm. week. Um, go like, share, subscribe, sell your soul, tell a friend, tell a foe, whoever you need to, to help us spread the word about our podcast. That would be fantastic. Yes. We could absolutely use your support here on Twitch. Uh, I guess we are actually not streaming this one on Twitch anymore. We're st- 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 streaming it privately on YouTube, but we could still use your help on both of those on Twitch and on our YouTube uh, you can search us on YouTube just by the Whatnots podcast, podcast, and we are on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Whatnots. Yeah. Uh, new stream... episodes of this show. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying we stream a lot of our podcasts live on Twitch, but we have made the live streams for this show a Patreon-only bonus. Yeah. And that starts at $1. Correct. $1. Yeah, for just $1, you can come watch us live, interact with us. What mm-hmm. Easter eggs did you spot? Come tell us. And if you bump that Patreon support up to $3, you get a bonus episode every month. Hell yeah. Uh, new episodes of this show come out every Wednesday. But again, you can get them early on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the whatnot. Melissa. Where can they find you on the interwebs? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And you can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on both tw- Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to stay up to date with this show or any of our other podcasts, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. 
go check us out at thewhatnots.com. That's it. We will be back next week with Brave for episode 57. This Mm -hmm. was episode 56. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you next time. Adios. Bye.